She was a great Canadian. We're very proud to have her archive here. And we're very lucky to have anything at all, given that her itinerant lifestyle, the fact that after her death, her sister actually destroyed a lot of her papers. So we're very lucky to have this archive, the first part of which came to us in 1961. My name is Rick Stapleton, and today we're going to talk about Pauline Johnson, a great Canadian. Pauline uh, was born in 1861 and at uh, Six Nations near Brantford, Ontario. Her father, George Johnson, was a Mohawk hereditary chief. Her mother, Emily, was English. And this heritage of Mohawk and English would play a very important part in, uh, in Pauline's life and career. She was a very well-known poet and uh, stage performer in late 1800s and early 1900s in Canada. From a very early age, she wanted a, a stage career, but she also wanted to be a published writer, particularly a poet. And her archive contains many manuscripts of her poems and other writings. Her writings were very popular and eventually they ended up in book form in 1895. Her first book, The White Wapum, was published in London. Uh, Pauline was very proud of that book. Later in the 1890s, she embarked on a stage career. She was promoted as the Iroquois Indian poet entertainer and she used her Mohawk name, Dege Yuan Wage at least that's an approximate pronunciation. It was a name she borrowed from her grandfather and it literally means double life or two lives, an allusion to that English Mohawk heritage. Her performances were very popular and they consisted of two parts. In the first part, she would recite the poems that reflected her Mohawk heritage. In the second part, she would change her clothes and appear in uh, English dress and recite her poems that dealt with nature, with uh, British and uh, uh, Canadian patriotism. Her performances were very, very well received. She was very, very popular, received uh, accolades in the press, and, uh, and enjoyed a, a very successful 15-year stage career. She traveled uh, across Canada 19 times by train, visited England three times, uh, appeared frequently in the U.S. She's remembered well as well as a feminist. Uh, at, at, at the time, it was very unusual for women to make their own living in the way that she did. She, as I said, traveled across the country many times. She was revered as a, what's called a, the new woman, uh, a 19th century feminist. And she was admired by such other feminists as Nellie McClung. And there are letters in the archive from McClung uh, expressing this, uh, this admiration. And of course, she's also remembered, given her Mohawk heritage, as a woman who, as she said, she felt it was important that I stand by my race and by my blood. Uh, her Mohawk heritage was very important to her. And in her own way, she played a part in, in, in making that better known in the English-speaking Canadian world. Eventually, she stopped performing and she moved to Vancouver. But while she was living in Vancouver, she still needed to make a living. She um, lived a hand-to-mouth existence, so she, she always needed to be working in order to survive. So later in life, she uh, wrote popular stories for boys, for example, that appeared in uh, publications such as The Boy's World, uh, adventure stories. But eventually uh, she became very ill when she was living in Vancouver. She developed breast cancer at a, at a, in, at a young age and uh, she could no longer work. So it, th there was a situation where she was, you know, close to destitution, but some friends intervened and rallied around her and arranged for her to have published uh, a book called The Legends of of Vancouver, which are stories of the Squamish people of Vancouver that were told to her by Squamish friends. Those friendships were very important to her late in life. She felt at times that she had 
had not learned enough of her Mohawk heritage, had, not, uh, had never learned the language. I think these Squamish friendships late in, late in life played a, an important part for her. When she died in Vancouver in 1913, her funeral was the largest in the city at that time. And uh, uh, she was buried in Stanley Park. She loved the park. She used to canoe in Burrard Inlet while she lived there. And uh, uh, there's now a memorial to her in Stanley Park that you can see today.